Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's talk about editing a video on an external SSD. So shout out goes to Elaine Ross for suggesting this. We had a conversation and uh, she said, Maybe this would be a good tutorial, and I agree with you. So thank you very much, Elaine. So here's the idea. Instead of editing a video on your internal drive, you're editing on an external drive. And she asked specifically about an SSD, which I think is a really good solution today. SSDs are much cheaper. If you want to see what an SSD looks like, it's this. This is the inside uh, of an SSD. Uh, and if you have something like a Blackmagic camera, you can just jam this right in and record directly on here. This is solid state, meaning there are no moving parts. The difference between this and something like this drive, this is uh, notoriously a bad drive to edit video on, and people end up buying them because they're cheap and they're huge. This is two terabytes and you can get them from 50, 60 bucks, but they're very slow drives. They're 5,400 RPM. There, there's no revolution per minute on an SSD. An SSD is just an SSD. It's fast. Good quality ones are fast. Um, but drives like this are only good for archiving. That's what I use this for. Put old projects on it. Other than that, they're completely useless. Um, I have to admit, I don't have any spare SSDs. Most of mine are like that one. They're in video production. So I am using a 7200 RPM drive and it's connected via USB 3. It's really important that, that you are connecting it um, via USB 3 so it's that weird kind of connector on one side and it's a blue edge, that little blue plastic. That means that this is a USB 3 cable and you'll actually see those squiggly uh, connectors on different drives, but you also need a USB 3 or USB-C connector on your laptop because USB is backwards compatible. Meaning if you bought a super fast SSD, plugged in a super fast SSD cable and your USB 2 port, uh, on you only have one USB 2 port. If you plug it in, that fast SSD is now as slow as that USB 2 port. So the port, the drive, the cable all need to be fast. Okay. So now that we have that um, understood, let's talk about organization. And I've, I'll have a, a link at the end uh, about what I think every editor should do, and that's organize your media before you even bring it into Premiere Pro. Um, for two reasons. Now you know where everything is. And you know that list? Let's have a look. It's this list here of all the stuff. People freak out when that list is gone, like when you hold down Option Option Shift or Alt Shift and you refresh Premiere Pro and you clear out the cache and that list is gone. They think Premiere Pro deleted their files. If you organize your media correctly, you never care about that list because you are organizing your media. So that's always a good reason to organize it. We haven't even started a project list yet. Let's go look at our drive. And by the way, I'm using a little program called uh, Direttore uh, File Manager. This is this gives you something called Miller Columns, which Mac users are familiar with. I'll put a link to the file manager um, for Windows users. I love it. Okay, so here's my 100 gigabyte drive. This is, like I said, a 7200 RPM, but this could just as easily be an SSD. And here I create my project. I'm just calling this my video project. In there, I've got a folder for videos. I've got a folder for graphics, a whole bunch of JPEGs. I could have Illustrator files, logos, and things like that audio files with a bunch of music. If I had music and dialogue, then I would have a dialogue folder and music folder and maybe uh, sound effects or something like that. But the idea here is that you're organizing this drive. And when you add to the drive, you put them in the right spot and uh, you always know where everything is. It doesn't take that long. Don't put your stuff all over your desktop. Okay. So the, the drive is fast. The drive's plugged into a fast port. My stuff is organized. Now we go to Premiere Pro. I'll create a new project and I'll navigate to that project.
And this is where I'm gonna put my, my projects. Some people will create a projects folder. That's fine, that's up to you. I don't manage that many, of, even if I had upwards of 15 or 20 projects, to me, I'm always really looking at the last one. So I just sort them by the most recent, but you could. So I'm gonna select the name of this and copy it so I don't have to type it in because I like to have the project name and the folder the same name. Okay, so that's where my stuff is going to be stored. We're on this first page of the new project. Um, this is where our GPU acceleration is. If you've got a fast enough GPU, it'll show up in here. I like to turn this little button on down here, display project name label for all instances. This is turned off by default. This doesn't really change your media. It's, it changes the way things are named. With this turned off, if you named something different in the, in the project bin and you already had it in the timeline, it would not update in the timeline. If you click this, it updates. So you have the same name in the timeline and the same name in the project. Some people don't want this. I want it. The next tab is more important. Here is scratch disks. By default, this is usually on documents. Make sure it's same as projects. Now the captured video and captured audio, those go back to the days when there was no digital video. It was analog and we had to capture it. I don't know. It's just an old habit of mine. I just put everything to the project. So same as project, same as project, video previews, same as project, audio previews, uh, auto saves, really important. It's in the same folder, library downloads and motion graphics templates. The ingest settings are only important if you're converting to something like a proxy, which we're not here. And proxy editing, I would, it's okay to do it on an external drive too. If you if you were out of room, um, you would just make another folder through this ingest. I've got a whole tutorial about making proxies. Uh, if you let Premiere Pro make the proxies, you just point it to the folder where the, the proxies are made. Premiere Pro takes care of, of organizing the links between the original and the proxies automatically. Okay, now I'll click okay. And I'll import from the media browser, not from the file menu and not from drag and drop. I know it's easier to drag and drop, but trust me, the media browser is going to cause a lot less headaches, especially with formats with, with things like spanned clips. If you have a, 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 com, uh, a camera that has multiple cards that will, will start recording on the second one when the first one's full, those are spanned clips. This just looks at it as one clip, much, much easier. So here's my drive right there. That's my project. There's my audio. I can select those if I want, or I can select the whole folder, right click and import that. And it shows up in the folder and everything is here. You know what I'll do next? Save. I save, save, save. Don't trust the auto save. So back to the media browser. There's our graphics, I'll import that. Oh, and you see what happens because audio was selected, the graphics are in audio. I'm gonna tap my tilde key and just maximize this and drag this out. Close that up. There's my graphics in that folder. Save, oh yeah, save every time. Now let's go back and grab the video. Same thing, I'm gonna leave it in the folder and import that. Save right away. Okay, so there are my video files and they showed up. So now I can easily drag those on, start creating my project. I got a bunch of graphics in here I can drop those in. There they are. And put my audio, music, and now everything is great. Now I hit save. Now let's go look at that same folder and see what's going on. Well, you can see that Premiere Pro created the auto save automatically and it put a save in there. There's my project. 
but it's also created that auto save. So it takes care of organizing everything in the folder if you did what I did and you point everything to the same folder. Now, adding things to this folder or to the folders on this drive does not update automatically in Premiere Pro. That's just the way Premiere Pro works. You have to add it here, go back to the media browser and add it um, in, in the project bin. I, I do have a tutorial on a, uh, a product that you can buy called Watchtower. Watchtower will actually connect your hard drive to the project bin, project panel. So as soon as you add something into your hard drive, it will update there. So some people like that. Like I said, I've got a whole tutorial on working with that. So that's really how to, to edit uh, projects. They're on this external drive outside of my system. Just be careful, always plug the drive in. Don't save projects anywhere outside of here. You can still back up to the cloud while you're editing on the drive, that's fine. Um, I have a, a tutorial on that too. Save your butt and save to the cloud. Why not? Project files, you're not saving the media, you're saving the project files. So everything is organized in one place. The worst thing that can happen in this is if the drive gets disconnected for whatever reason um, while you're editing, um, sometimes that might happen with a drive and you know you can plug it back in. If the if the media is missing in your project, it's fine to save your project with the media missing. The next time the drive is connected and you open the project, the project will point to the last place the media is, so it will load that in. So you, you should be fine. Just remember, make sure you're editing with that uh, plugged in and um, uh, don't unplug it until or dismount that, that drive and, and until you're finished editing and close. Uh, I think it would be safe to even close Premiere Pro before you even remove that drive. And uh, I think you'll be fine. So there's a few good lessons to learn here. Organization, uh, just ask my wife. She's the queen of organization. Um, uh, we know where everything is in our house because of her, and she's uh, really uh, made me a much more organized person. If you've got projects all over your desktop, yikes, you're just asking for problems. Um, as Elaine is doing, she's starting to edit on external drives, but like I said, beware of these giant, uh, cheap, multi-terabyte drives. They're really slow and they're not good for editing. So there you go. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, please take a moment and subscribe. We love all of our subscribers. Look, we're getting close to the big number. And if you want to support us more, you can do that on videorevealed.com on our shop. Uh, you can donate once or monthly. You can also download a bunch of free stuff. There's a member section once you are uh, a paid subscriber and uh, a few other things that we'll be adding more stuff to that. All right. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to listen to people like Elaine create a tutorial that's going to benefit you in your video editing.